just be out with us to Isla Mujeres. You're watching a complete travel guide for this beautiful island and you will learn everything you need to know really about this island where to stay where to eat you know where food is so we'll show you best places to eat here on the island and of course what part of the island is the best place to be including beaches and tours and everything else you would want to know about this island let's get started and, and just, just be, be out, out with, with us, us. Cheers. Isla Mujeres is a small island located just over 8 miles away from Cancun, Mexico. It is a narrow island, it's only just over 4 miles long and less than half a mile in width. Isla Mujeres means the Isla Mujeres translates as island of women and back in the days it used to be just a small fishing village people used to worship a fertility goddess here on this island. Locals used to bring statues of women to the shores of this island as an offering to help with fertility. After this island was discovered in early 1500s, there was a lot of statues of women all over this island. And that's why this island got the name the Island of Women. Now let's talk about when to come to Isla Mujeres. December through April is the highest season. That's when the most people come from North America to escape the cold. Now May through September is the hottest season, but also this is when you will find the most rain. September and October is hurricane season, but again, it does not mean that you will for sure get hit with a hurricane. And November is the shoulder month. Let us know in the comments, when would you like to come to Isla Mujeres? Now, how to get to Isla Mujeres? It is very easy. You need to take a ferry from Puerto Juarez. We just got our round trip tickets. It is 450 pesos per person each. The ferry runs every half an hour from early in the morning till late in the evening. And it's a quick ride over. So just be out with us. And just like that, 20 minutes later, we have arrived to the northern end of Isla Mujeres. As you can see, I have spray all over my shades. That's because I was on the upper deck. Irina took the lower deck because she didn't want to get the sunburn. But upstairs was really comfortable. Downstairs, the seating is comfortable as well. And it wasn't really that packed, but all in all, it was just a quick, easy trip. And now we're going to explore Isla Mujeres. Now let's talk about where to stay on the island. The most popular area is the north side of the island but again there are east side and the west side right now we are on the east side of the island the scenery is absolutely gorgeous there is a more of a rocky shoreline so and a lot more uh, waves so it's not really that good for swimming there is a small part uh, where uh, there is a beach where you can lay out but again going into the water the shoreline is very rocky this site is way more quieter. There's no music playing and it is perfect for sunrise. The west side of the island, however, is popping. Let's go check it out. Staying here on the northwest of the island, you get a perfect view on a sunset like this. But this side of the island is way more crowded. There are lots of people, restaurants and bars and loud music. So pick your side. Accommodations here on the island vary from 50 US dollars per night up to 500 per night. There are just a few all-inclusive resorts here. Right behind me, there is an iconic Mia Hotel and it is all-inclusive and yes, you guessed it, it is $500 a night. But honestly, the food here on the island has been phenomenal. And I personally would choose staying in a regular hotel and explore local cuisines and restaurants like we did. Let us know in the comments, do you prefer all-inclusive or you prefer to dine in different restaurants? 
So here at the north side of the island is where you will find the most hotels and Airbnbs. If you look on the map of Isla Mujeres, it is a long, narrow island. And in the middle of the island is where all the locals live. There is actually a town located in the middle. This is where you will find a lot of different Airbnbs as well. There are a lot of different restaurants. That's where also a lot of locals like to go and eat and the prices are a little bit cheaper. On the south side of the island, there are also a few hotels, but most of them are here on the north side. Let's talk about the beach here in Isla Mujeres. Well, first of all, the sand, it's powdery fine. I didn't really expect it to be this way. We were actually surprised when we came on the beach, the sand is so powdery and light. Feels really good between the toes. And there's a lot of shading. You know, most beaches sometimes don't have that much shade and you're kind of fighting to get shade or you have to either rent a beach umbrella or find some type of cabana that one of the hotels or one of the restaurants might be selling. Here, it doesn't really have to be that way. There's a lot of places where there's shade. So this beach is Playa Norte and the way it is, it's at the very end of Isla Mujeres and it actually curves around kind of like a U. So what happens is when the sun rises on one end, one part of the beach is in the shade and then the other part is sunny and then as the sun sets, the other part that was sunny goes into shade and then the other part gets exposed. So either way, you're going to find plenty of shade here on this, on this beach and it's a beautiful beach. We absolutely love it here and we do highly recommend that. When you come here, as soon as you get off that water ferry, drop off your luggage, head to the beach. You'll thank us later. The North Beach on Isla Mujeres is the most popular beach and rightfully so. It is really long, it wraps around the north side of the island and it has beautiful powdery sand. It is a lot of sand actually for you to lay out and pick your perfect spot. Some spots of the ocean are really shallow, the water is clear and the water colors are mesmerizing. It is perfect for little kids, they're just splashing around, the water goes really shallow all the way out and it is perfect for adults as well. Along the beach shore there are so many beach clubs, restaurants right on the beach playing music, there are parties, DJ, live music and lots of entertainment so it is fun for the entire family. The beach is public and there are a lot of public entrances to enter the beach as well which is perfect. There are people that are going to be this. That's a thing here. We saw it all over the place. So it's just something to look out for so you know that there is topless here. Transportation. How do we get around this beautiful island? Well, most of the time it's going to be in a golf cart. As you can see behind me, there are golf carts everywhere. Another way to do it is actually getting into a taxi and there's bicycle and there's a moped. So you can rent mopeds, you can rent the golf carts and you can rent, they have quads. So like this quad that's passing in right now, you can rent those as well. And that's the way you get around the island. To rent a golf cart for the day, it's going to cost you $75. And again, to get from one end of the island to the next is about 40 minutes or so. Irene and I didn't find it necessary to rent a golf cart. Again, we are on the north side of the island. Everything is pretty much in walking distance. So not unless you're actually planning on exploring and going all the way to the south side, then we recommend you do get a golf cart. But we decided to skip it and we've been walking here everywhere and it's just been great just walking around seeing the shops, seeing the locals, and just hearing the music as you're passing by. So we do highly recommend that. You're probably wondering, what is there to do here on Isla Mujeres? Well, the island is actually a decent size. And besides all the partying and drinking margarita, the water activities are number one attraction. Mexico has the second largest barrier reef, so does Belize and it attracts a lot of divers so if you're into diving this island would be perfect for you there are a lot of dive shops a lot of diving excursions you can take 
we actually took a snorkeling tour. Snorkeling is also <laughs> one of the number one attractions to do here on the island. And we took a four hour trip. If you want to see what it looks like, we will leave the link in the description below and at the end of the video. But besides the snorkeling trip, there are lots of catamarans, boats, uh, jet skis, kayaks, paddle boards, and all types of water activities you might think of. There's also a dolphin encounter located in the center of the island where you can go and interact with dolphins if that's your thing. As you mentioned in how to get around the island, the ferry comes here every 30 minutes and day tripping is actually one of the things to do so if you decide not to stay on the island you can take a day trip from cancun either on a ferry because it comes back to cancun really late as well so you can even stay here for dinner or another popular thing to do is to take a catamaran tour from Cancun, come here to Isla Mujeres for a day trip and then the catamaran will bring you back to Cancun. There are a lot of things to do here on the island. We've been here for only four days, so we have only gone to the beach, bar hopping and snorkeling trips. But there are also a few seasonal activities that I really want to do. Well, first of all, snorkeling with a whale shark. It is in my opinion an incredible experience but it is only available May through early September. Another place on the south side of the island that you can explore is Park de los Pianos. It's a water park but not the water park you might think of. There are yes a few slides but mostly it is known for water activities like kayaking, paddle boarding, hanging out on the beach. Another spot on the south side of the island is Garafon National Park. It's a place where you can go hang out in their thermal pools. Uh, they have panoramic pools, lounge chairs, kayaks, paddle boards. It's a good place to hang out. But check out the reviews. When I was looking at the reviews, they were not as good. Another place you can find on the south side is the aquarium. At the very tip of the island on the southern point, there is a reserve called Punta Sur. It's a nature reserve with a coastal walk. This is where you will also find the fertility statue and it just offers gorgeous views. And to enter that, currently it is 30 pesos. It is only 9 p.m. now. The area behind me is actually beachfront with all the restaurants and bars. As you can see, they are all closed, but they are more active during the day. They have music playing, live performance, and entertainment. But in the evening, everyone goes to the main street in the center to eat. There are so many restaurants and bars, and again, live music and entertainment. This street reminds me of Little Italy in New York. There are cute shops, hanging lights, there are so many different restaurants. And when you pass those restaurants, it just smells so good. Even though this street is very narrow, it feels very intimate, very cozy. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk from one end to the next. And you can find different types of restaurants, obviously Mexican, Italian, even sushi. There's a lot of variety here. If you know us, you know we are foodies. One thing you have to know here in Isla Mujeres, just a block away from where all the main restaurants are and a block away from the beach, you will find this avenue and actually other places along the way, just in the streets, in the middle of the streets, food vendors. They sell everything from coconut water, cold coconuts, to you see behind me, there's churros back there. There's tacos. I mean, there's such a burritos. There's so many different foods you can find on the streets here. Let us know in the comment. Do you like restaurants, sit down, dining, or do you prefer that street food? Because you know, some of these street foods, oh, they're so good. Sour and the Right. So there's esquites, which is one of my favorite. I usually get it on the corn on the cob. This time for the first time, I'm gonna try it in a cup and let's see what it tastes like. So I'm gonna have it in the cup here. So the way esquites is made, they use the boiled sweet corn, they put it in the cup, 
get all the water out and then they top it with all the goodness. Look at that, it's loading it up. Sorry. Look at that. Spicy. Woo. Boom. What is this one? $2. $2. Yeah. Again, my first time eating elotes in a cup. Normally, I have it on the stick, on the corn, on the cob. So this is a little bit different for me. I mean, it should taste the same, but let's see. Have a bite. Spicy, so you put on top, it's like a, a mixture of all different types of spices, like an allspice on top. It gives the corn a little kick because the corn doesn't really have that much flavor. It's a, ton, a little bit sweet. The mayonnaise adds the creaminess to it. And of course, the cheese. It's really good, but personally, I think I still prefer the corn on the cob. It's a little bit messier with the corn because you get it kind of all over your face. But I kind of like it on the corn on the cob as opposed to in a cup like this. Let's hit the next spot. So you see behind me, that's Malcasitas. That is so good. And if you guys know, have been following us, the moment we got to Mexico, we were in Bacalao, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, even here in Isla Mujeres. The moment we see the Malcasitas, we go and we get it because it's just so good. If you don't know what Malcasitas are, it's kind of a mixture, almost like a pancake mix, and it's made really thin like a crepe, and they put it on a flat iron grill. Inside, they chop up a whole banana, they add Nutella, they add caramel, they add kind of all these different things that you want on the inside. When they're done, they roll it up really tight so it's like a tube, and it's super, super crunchy and super light, but really sweet. Really good treat for the evening times, especially in certain parts of Mexico. They come out at around five, six o'clock in the evening. That's when you'll see them. But surprisingly here in Isla Mujeres, they're here throughout the day. We've seen them all throughout the day. So they don't only come out in the evening times here. If you haven't tried Marquesitas, we definitely recommend you do so. Our next food recommendation is breakfast. We are on Hidalgo Avenue at Lola Valentina restaurant. And this breakfast is definitely wow. worthy of trying. I ordered uh, a poblano stuffed pepper. The poblano pepper was massive and it was stuffed with scrambled eggs, bacon, uh, had some tortilla sauce on it, a little bit of uh, chopped tomatoes along with corn and uh, tortilla chips on top. It's really good. And of course, guac on top of that. Excellent. And I did not think that I would like something like that when I tried his. Oh my God, I can definitely have a portion of my own. Well, at least half a portion because it is massive. The eggs were really soft. The pepper was not spicy at all. It was nice and soft and the perfect crunch on top because it is deep fried. I ordered poached eggs on gluten-free avocado toast and they were excellent. Lola Valentina is definitely JBO approved. We've been to Lola Valentina several times for breakfast and we loved everything we tried there. Another breakfast place we can recommend is Cafe Mogagua. Guys, everywhere we ate was incredible. Cafe Mogagua has excellent choices of breakfast, anything you can think about, waffles, pancakes, french toast, eggs, Mexican options, American options, potatoes and the service is fantastic and i really love their concept they have inspirational quotes written on the wall the waiters are wearing t-shirts and they have different inspirational quotes on there on the back of the t-shirts as well so it's really cool as you can see there is a line here so you already know it's good and it's jbo approved we just finished eating at Los Tacos de Jugo de O number one recommended on TripAdvisor and those tacos were excellent. I got fish tacos, they were nice and gentle inside, crispy on the outside, perfect panko breading. Devon got some uh, beef tacos and they were so flavorful, definitely recommend it. Another JBO approved restaurant is Compadres. They serve phenomenal fish and shrimp tacos. And they are not plain, they, are, they serve them with onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, and the flavors are excellent. And if you come here before 5 p.m., they have a special where they will serve you three tacos with either two beers or a margarita. 
It is definitely JBO approved. Come to Compadres and let us know in the comments how you like their tacos. For cheap eats, check out Beach and Burrito. Great burritos stuffed with all different kinds of things depending on what you choose. We just had chicken with rice, beans, avocado, cheese, and their potatoes are awesome. They are thinly sliced potato wedges and deep fried. That's a different spin on french fries. Definitely JBO approved. For 180 pesos, you get to choose either a breakfast burrito or a lunch burrito. Keep in mind, they close at 4 p.m. Cheese! We just finished having dinner at Chantelo restaurant. It's another gem, guys. Definitely recommend. Food is awesome. JBO approved. I had salmon with blue cheese, with vegetables and rice. And I had... Shrimp Alfredo. Alfredo, yes. The drinks were pretty light yes. and the service was a bit slow and not as attentive but the food it was, was on point. Yes. We were walking around the street and we passed by this restaurant La Terraza which is located on the second floor. They were playing live music and the smell was really good. But it is not JBO approved. We had chicken wings and they were so small that they literally tasted just like chicken skin. Like they I you could barely There was no meat on it. It was the tiniest yeah. wings I've ever seen. Yeah, it was just like chopped something. Yeah. And then we ordered uh shrimp tacos and it didn't look like the photo whatsoever and it came with pasta spaghettis it came with spaghettis and yeah. the shrimp taco just was two pieces of tor tortillas with about five uh, grilled shrimps on it no sauce no nothing no guac no yeah. nothing the, tortilla and shrimp the tacos were so simple you might as well just eat shrimp with that spaghetti that they served exactly you. that was the weirdest and the worst food had here on Isla Mujeres, but we do recommend La Terraza for drinks and live, live music. entertainment. Absolutely, the band did a great job, they sounded really good, and unlike a lot of the places here, yeah. And uh, the drinks were decently strong, yes. Method of payment here on the island is kind of funny and it's kind of tricky. Most of the places here they want cash and they only accept cash. Irene and I have been to the beaches where they have these beach clubs that have bars. They all want cash. Some of the restaurants we've had breakfast in, even lunch, they only accept cash. So be, be careful of that. Also, some of them do say, well, we would prefer cash, but if you do have a credit card, you can pay with credit card. But there's a catch. There's a five to 10% charge that they charge you for using your credit card on top of your final bill. So that's definitely something to be aware, aware of. And cash is basically just the way to go here. It's the easiest way for them. But for us, it just means that you now have to figure out how much money you're going to be using and maybe constantly going back and forth to the ATM to withdraw money because you just didn't account for all the places you want to be spending. There are places here where you can change your currency to Mexican pesos, but you can also pay in the stores with US dollars and they will give you Mexican pesos back in exchange. When we went on our tour, they wanted us to pay cash, something to be aware of. Now let's talk about the ATM. Obviously you're here in Mexico and you're gonna be spending buying souvenirs, buying tequila and everything else. One thing you do have to know, there are a few ATMs here, but they're mostly in Spanish. So just keep that in mind that, you know, brush up on your Spanish a little bit. But the cool thing is that you've taken money out of the ATM before. The menu system is the same. It's just the words that's in Spanish. Um, there are a couple banks as well. One of the banks do have an ATM and that's also in Spanish. But there's a city bank, which is right across from the terminal from the water taxi. And they, their ATM actually has English. The whole ATM system, all the menus, everything is in English. So if you're really having a hard time getting out money or you feel intimidated with the Spanish language, all you need to do is go to that ATM, which is in the center of everything, and you'll be able to have English menus and you'll be able to get your pesos out. Even though Isla Mujeres is a really small island, there is no shortage of entertainment. During the day, 
all beach clubs playing music and there is a lot of fun there is lots of live bands and in the evening time the main street also has lots of bars entertainment and live music while staying on Isla Mujeres we felt really safe day and night there is lots of police presence and we were staying in a touristy area where everyone is pretty much a tourist. I even felt comfortable walking around by myself in the evening. So for solo travelers, Isla Mujeres is safe as well. Here on Isla Mujeres, the streets get flooded so easily. It just rained for a little bit. And as you can see behind me, the streets are all flooded. If you decide to save money and cook your own meals, here on the north side, you can find the supermarket called Aki. If you stay more in the center of the island where all the locals live, you can find a bigger supermarket and it is a little bit cheaper. We originally came here for Isla Mujeres for just two nights and we ended up staying longer because we liked it so much. We actually loved it. We are going to miss Isla Mujeres and this is one of our favorite spots in Mexico. If you haven't seen our other Mexico vlogs, we will leave the link in the playlist at the end of this video and in the description below. And we also have another channel world travel walking tours so if you love walking videos with no commentary just walking through all the different places we visit you might want to check out that channel and become a subscriber that would be awesome and we do have several videos of walking here in Isla Mujeres and in other parts of Mexico yes. if you have any other questions about Isla Mujeres let us know in the comments thank you so much for watching and as usual just, Just be, be out, out with, with us. us. Cheese!